Hi everyone, it's Matt here from Giraffes and I've got a book here for you and it's called There's a Dragon in My Backpack and it's by Tom Nicholl. Chapter 1 Bring your dragon to school day. There's a dragon in my backpack. This is what I've been reminding myself of all day. Question, why is there a dragon in my backpack? Answer, because I'm too nice, that's why. And because... The dragon's right. It's not fair that he has to stay in my bedroom all day. Question. Why is there a dragon living in my bedroom? Oh yeah, sorry. I should explain. The dragon isn't one of those full-size, princess-stealing, night-guzzling dragons that you've probably heard of. For one thing, I'd never fit one of those in my bag. No, he's a mini-dragon, which means he looks exactly like one of those other dragons. Same green scaly skin, fiery breath, sharp teeth and claws, except that he's for about 15 centimetres tall and can talk. Oh, can he talk? His name is Pan, and here's how he came into my life. Property developers destroy Pan's home in China. Pan's parents bundle him into a crate of bean sprouts bound for Mexico to stay with his aunt and uncle. The restaurant in Mexico that ordered the bean sprouts closes down. The crate is sent to England to my friend Min's parents' Chinese restaurant. Min delivers Pan to my house in a takeaway meal without realising. I end up with a mini dragon who gives me no end of grief. So now, Pan spends most of his day in my house playing video games, reading comics and watching TV. Which sounds like a perfect day to me, but for some reason he finds it boring. For ages he's been begging me to let him come to school. And last night I finally gave in, on the condition that he kept quiet and stayed out of sight in my bag. Surprisingly, today's actually been going well. Aside from the odd whisper from Pan asking me to repeat something he's missed or helpfully providing me with the answer to a sum or ten, he's kept his word. And it's almost home time now, so I can probably stop worrying. I mean, realistically, there's almost no chance at all of something going wrong now. Rat! Almost no chance. That screaming woman who looks a bit like a Yeti is Miss Biggs, my teacher. She thinks she's just seen a rat run across the classroom floor. She hasn't. She's just seen a mini dragon run across the classroom floor. Although completely different, I can see why she might confuse the two. If you had just caught sight of a tiny creature darting across the room, you'd probably think rat before you thought mini dragon. To be honest, you'd probably never think mini dragon. Unless you happen to be me, in which in case, you'd always think mini dragon. As screaming kids began to barge their way to the door, I noticed Miss Biggs reaching under the desk, pulling out the cricket bat. Everyone knows she keeps there. No one quite knows what it's for, although there have been plenty of gruesome stories passed down over the years about Miss Biggs using it on misbehaving kids, annoying parents and even the odd and unruly teacher. No one really believes those stories, of course, but then no one thinks she plays cricket with it either. Uh, Miss, what's that for? I asked, swallowing a huge lump in my throat. This... He's Doris, smiled Miss Biggs, thumping her back in her hand. And Doris doesn't take kindly to vermin in her classroom. Doris gets very angry, and when Doris gets angry, things get smashed. Miss Biggs was considered the toughest teacher around thanks to her enormous muscle-bound physique and general bat, bat attitude. In fact, people like to imagine what Miss Biggs might have done before she became an evil, heartless school teacher. The theories included a championship boxer who was forced to retire when no one would fight her anymore, not even the men. A commando who was chucked out of the forces for being too rough with their other, their other soldiers. A crash test dummy before crash test dummies were invented. The person at the zoo whose job it is to step in whenever, whenever any other animals start fighting. With her massive head of curly white hair, Miss Biggs has always reminded me of a yeti. You might think that's funny, but trust me, a yeti armed with a creep bat is no laughing matter. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, my escaped mini dragon. Jaden, where are you going? I said, grabbing the arm of my best friend as he ran past me alongside hordes of fleeing kids. Jaden looked at me as if he had lost the plot. Where do you think I'm going? He said. I'm getting away from that rat. <laughs> You're such a chicken, said Min, our other friend, calmly staying put. It occurred to me that since Min had been the one to bring Pan into my life, technically this was all her fault. But I just had to try those fruity bean sprouts, didn't I? 
It's not a rat, I whispered, trying to remain calm on the outside, while on the inside I was getting very worried about the thought of Miss Big squashing our little friend. It's Pan. Of course it is, groaned Min. A pan won't be any use against a rat, said Miss Biggs, twirling her cricket bat in the air. They're clever little beasts. Cleverer than you lot, that's for sure. But not as clever as Doris and me, she paused. What was that? Miss Biggs spun round and swung the bat like a hammer, smashing an entire desk in two. Jaden, Mint and I, the only kids left in the room, let out a huge gasp. Fortunately, there was no sign of Pan in the wreckage. Phew, I said. Miss Big scowled in frustration. Thought for sure it, I saw it there. She turned and glared at us. If you three are sticking around, make yourselves useful. Find that rat. Flush it out. We nodded. Finding Pan before Miss Biggs did seemed like a good idea. As Miss Biggs stalked around the classroom, Jaden began checking under desks and Min started looking in cupboards. I scanned the room, trying to think of the likeliest place Pam would be. Then it dawned on me. I headed towards the storage trays and pulled out the one with my name on it. Oh, hey, Eric, whispered Pam. He was sitting in the tray, clutching a piece of paper, trying to look as casual as possible, as if this was a perfectly normal place for me to find him. How's it going? Mini dragons, in their own words, are excellent at a lot of things, but acting innocent isn't one of them. We had a deal, I whispered back. Escaping from my backpack to have a look in this tray was not part of it. Pan looked at me doubtfully. Wasn't it? No, I'm not so sure, he said slowly. It's a bit of a grey area, isn't it? I looked at Pan in amazement. How is it a grey area? I said, stay in the bag. You came out of the bag. That's not grey. That's black or white. But it's definitely not grey. Well, look, said Pan, trying to sound reasonable. It's clear that neither one of us is right. So I think we should just draw a line under the whole thing and move on. I glanced over my shoulder to check Miss Biggs hadn't seen us, but she and Doris were busy threatening a plant pot at the other end of the classroom. Why did you escape? I asked. It was so boring inside that bag, Pan grumbled, and so, so hot. I mean, I know I'm a dragon and should be used to high temperatures, but still. Anyway, I've just been having a look through some of your drawings. Is this supposed to be me? I mean, I'm flattered you drew me, but you have to admit it looks nothing like me. You haven't captured my good looks at all. Crisp, bellowed Miss Biggs from across the room. Who are you talking to? Not the rat, I hope. There's no reason we rats, Crisp. Stand back, Doris is coming through. I spun round, the room drained, the colour draining from my face. I had to think fast. I took a step backwards, quickly banging the drawer shut with my bum, causing Pan to let out a little yelp. As Miss Biggs thundered towards us, I pointed at the door. Out there, Miss. I just saw it heading out the corridor. Miss Big screeched to a halt. You sure? She asked. I think I saw it too, said Min, who seemed to realise what I was doing. Yeah, said Jaden, give me a wink to show he understood. It was huge, had a big smile on its face. Think it's got away from me, does it? Said Miss Biggs. Come on, Doris, let's go and show the rat how wrong it is. As soon as Miss Biggs left the room, I pulled out the tray. Pan was sitting there, his claws covering his mouth looking like he was about to bath. What's wrong? I asked him. I found some prawn crackers in your tray, but they tasted horrible. I scratched my head. There weren't any prawn crackers in my tray. They were just some drawings and, oh, Pan, I said, those prawn crackers. They weren't glued to a bit of paper in the shape of a face, were they? A groggy looking Pan nodded weakly. Those were styrofoam chips. We used them in art last week. Pan let out a belch and a jet of flame came out after it. Oh, that's much better, said Pan. Not really, I said, as the flame caught one of my drawings. Pan quickly leapt into my arms. Min moved fast, grabbing a jug of water from Miss Big's desk and throwing it over the tray. The pictures were ruined, but at least the fire was out. As Min swiftly returned the jug to Miss Big's desk, Jaden and I opened the window and started wafting out the smoke before the alarm could go off. When I was sure we were in the clear, I quickly closed it again and turned back to Pan. He grinned to me at me apologetically, but I'd had enough. Now, stay out of my sight, I said, bundling him into my bag, or you'll be the first mini dragon to make a home run as the ball. You're thinking of baseball, said Pan. Yeah, he's right, said Jaden. I'd be hitting a six in cricket, added Min. Fine, I said, rolling my eyes. 
My point is he'd be on the wrong end of a cricket bat. I glared at Pan. If you're cool with that, then you're, you're welcome to stay out. I waited for a response, but was greeted with silence. That's what I thought, I said, zipping me up my bag. Ten minutes later, Miss Biggs burst back into the classroom, a, a foul look on her face. Get back in here, you cowards, she shouted. The rest of the class hurried in from the corridors as fast as they had left. An awkward silence filled the room. Did you get it, miss? asked Jaden. Min and I shook our heads in disbelief. Of course she hadn't got it. There was nothing to get. No, I didn't, snapped Miss Biggs. I thought I had it, but, well, uh, to cut a long story short, we no longer have a functioning coffee machine in the staff room. Miss Biggs had barely sat down at her desk before another scowl appeared on her face. What's happened to my water? she roared. Which one of you is responsible for this? Min, Jaden and I glanced at each other with panicked expressions. I couldn't tell Miss Biggs who was actually responsible. Not unless I wanted a flattened mini dragon. I put my hand up. It was me, miss. I got thirsty. Min and Jaden looked at me in horror. They knew I was in for it now. I could see them staring, starting to raise their hands. They were going to take the blame with me. I gave them a look that said, don't do it. There's no point in all three of us getting in trouble. They seemed to get the message and lowered their hands. Though neither of them looked very happy about it. The whole jug, said Miss Biggs, looking flabbergasted. This is my water crisp. Mine. You can think about that when you're writing me a 500 word report on the history of rats. That's not fair, I said. Not fair, repeated Miss Biggs. No, Crisp, not fair is me knowing that somewhere out there is a rat who escaped justice. And now I can't even have a drink of my own water. That's not fair. I sighed, slumping in my chair. Could this day get any worse? I thought to myself, which was a mistake. Of course it could get any worse. Oh, and Crisp? Yes, Miss. Have it on my desk by tomorrow morning. With Miss Biggs, it always got worse.